Hello everyone, this is Chelsea and today I'm going to be showing you how to do conversions, specifically how to convert fractions into decimals and then how to convert decimals into fractions. So this is something that we did in OSCS class and so this video is just going to be a reminder for you so that you can then go and do your worksheet that I emailed you and you can follow along with this video if you need help with it. Okay, so let's get started with converting fractions into decimals. We'll start off with that one because that one's pretty easy. It really only has one step. So to turn a fraction into a decimal, I just made a little note at the bottom here. You're going to do the top number divided by the bottom number. And that's going to be your only step every time whenever you want to convert a fraction into a decimal. So let's do this first one here. We're going to do three quarters. And so we're going to do the top number three divided by the bottom number which is 4. And you can put this into your calculator and you can just do 3 divided by 4. All right, And then on your calculator it should show you a decimal number. And the decimal that it'll give you is 0 0.75. Okay, and then that's it. That's your answer. So you don't have to do anything else after that. You don't have to, you know, round off your uh, numbers or anything like that. However many numbers you get after the decimal, that's what your answer is going to be. Okay, now let's just try one more. I'm just going to do one more quick little example just so that you really get that it's the same process every time. So again, for 13 divided by 4, really you're just going to follow top number divided by bottom number. So in your calculator, you're going to put 13 divided by 4, and you're going to get the number 325 Okay, and again, that's it. That's your answer. So you don't have to do anything else after that. So on your worksheet, just make sure to read it very carefully. Make sure that you're doing the questions that say converting fractions into decimals. And all you have to do is divide. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to convert decimals into fractions. And I just wrote a couple little instructions here so that you remember. So number one, you're going to look at how many numbers are after the decimal. So that's going to be on the right side of the decimal. And you're going to remember that that's how many zeros are going to be in your bottom number on your fraction. So I'm going to show you what I mean in a second. And then your second step after that is to put all of the numbers that are in your decimal on top, but you're going to take out the decimal point. So I'm going to show you that right now. So the first example here, we have 0 0.75. Okay, so we need to make that into a fraction. And we're going to first look at how many numbers are after the decimal. So my decimal point is right here. That means that there's one, two, two numbers after the decimal. two numbers after decimal. Okay. So that means that my bottom part of my fraction is always going to start with one. Okay, remember, the bottom number always starts with one. And then however many numbers are over here, that's how many zeros are going to be after one. So here we have two, and so I'm going to put two zeros. One, two. Okay, so then that means that our bottom number is 100. It's one, and then two zeros. Okay, now I'm going to take all of the numbers in my decimal. 
I don't really have to put my zero because if I put a zero right before seven and five, it's not gonna make any difference. So I can leave that out if I want to. But I'm gonna take all the other numbers and I'm going to put them at the top of my fraction. So I have seven, five. So I'm gonna put them right here. Okay, there we go. So now my fraction is 75 over 100. But now am I done? Not yet. Because remember, anytime we're working with fractions, we always have to reduce, okay? So to reduce 75 over 100, we can think about what numbers divide evenly into 75 and 100. And by the way, if you're kind of struggling with the reducing, remember I did also send you a reducing fractions video. So I recommend you watch that one first or maybe go back to it if you're not quite sure how to reduce. But here, I'm going to try to use the biggest number I can find that goes into both 75 and 100. That way I can take out some middle steps. So I know that 25 goes into both of these numbers. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use 25. Okay, so now 75 divided by 25, that's going to give me 3. All right, and then 100 divided by 25, I'm going to get four. So that means that in the end, 0 0.75 converts to the fraction three quarters. It's saying that they mean the same thing, right? 75.75 is the same as three quarters. Okay, let's do another example. So now here, this next one, we have 0 0.752. Okay, so this one has three numbers after the decimal. There we go, right? Because one, two, three. That means there's going to be three zeros in our bottom number. So let's make our fraction now. We have one at the beginning, always, and then three zeros. One, two, three, just like that. Then I'm gonna take all my numbers that I have over here, and again, this zero doesn't make a difference, so I can leave it out. I'm gonna take all the other ones, and I'm going to put them at the top, but I'm gonna make sure I, I don't carry through my decimal. I don't need that. So I'm just gonna put seven, five, two at the top of my fraction. All right, so then again, I have a fraction with two even numbers, and so that means that I can reduce them. Now this one's a little bit tricky because they are very big numbers. You can always use that guess and check method, or you can also just keep dividing by two, right? Because remember, anytime you have even numbers, divide by two, divide by two, every time until you can't divide anymore, that will get you to the same answer in the end. But I'm just going to skip ahead and I'm going to take out all those middle steps because I know that both of these numbers divide by 8. Okay, so oops, it's an 8. There we go. And so now I'm going to skip right to the end answer. And when I put that into my calculator, 752 divided by 8 is 94. And 1,000 divided by 8 is 125. All right. And so now I can't divide these anymore because there's no number that goes evenly into 94 and 125. So that means I'm all done. All right, now I'm just going to show you a couple more examples here and then you should be good to go. So next one we have 0 0.7, one number after the decimal. Okay, and so that means that my fraction is going to be the number one with one zero after it, so it's just going to be the number 10. Then I'm going to take all my numbers over here and I'm going to put them on top. So now I have seven over 10. And I look at that fraction and I think, can I reduce it? No, nope, I can't. No number goes into seven and 10 evenly. So that means I'm all done. Okay, one more example. Here we have 1.75, so it's a number that's 
over one whole number, but we're still just looking at the number of numbers that we have after the decimal. So here afterwards, we have one, two. Two numbers after the decimal. That means that our fraction is going to just have two zeros in it. So one followed by two zeros. It's 100 again. Now I'm going to take all my numbers over here, all of them, including this one, right? Because now one does count, right? And I'm gonna put them on top, but I'm not going to carry over my decimal. I'm just gonna take out my decimal. So I'm gonna put one, seven, five on top. One, seven, five, just like that. And now I can reduce my fraction. So to reduce this one, again, I'm going to divide by 25, because that's the highest number that goes into both of these numbers that I have here. And I'm going to get, um, let's see, I'm going to get 25, 50, 75, 100, 25, 50, 75. So I'm going to get 7 over 4. Okay, now you could leave it at that, but remember that is an improper fraction. Remember how we were saying that fractions that have a bigger number on the top compared to the bottom um, is an improper fraction? So you can show this as a mixed number. We didn't really go over that too much, but I'll show you it quickly here because it would be good for you to know for measuring. So 4 goes into 7 or divides into seven just one time, because otherwise it would go over. That's your whole number, one. Four stays the same on the bottom. And then you think about what was the leftover when I did seven divided by four? Or you can also think of it as how many more do I need? If I have four, four plus what is going to get me seven? Another way you can think of it as what is seven minus Four. Either way, you're going to get the same answer, and it's three. So three goes on top. And so in the end, your answer, 1.75, converts to seven over four, or you can also say one and three quarters. Okay, so hopefully these examples will be helpful to you when you're doing your worksheets. Remember, you can always pause and rewind, you know, go back to these videos when you're doing your worksheets. That way, if you need more help, you can take a look here. Also, if you have any questions at all while you're working on your numeracy, please feel free to email me at my OFE email, and I'll make sure that I get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, thanks everyone. Have a great day. Bye.